Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number six in our incredible new tutorial series where you're learning how to show the robots who's going to be boss. I'm going to need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. That would be strong black coffee poured over ice no sweeteners, none needed. I'm also going to need you to get out your robotic gear. What? You don't have your gear yet? Look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon where you can pick up the Elegoo Smart Car 3.0 and you can play along at home. Hey, as always, I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. It is your encouragement and your support that keeps this great content coming. You guys that are not helping out yet, look down in the description. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about skedaddling on over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and let's talk about what we are going to learn today. What we are going to learn is there was a little secret that I didn't tell you last week. And that little secret is that you can actually control the speed of the smart car through the L298N controller. Now, why did I not tell you that last week? Because I want to give this to you in bite-sized chunks. And unfortunately, last week, that lesson already was a little bit long. I think it went an hour and 20 minutes. I really like my lessons to be 30 minutes, no longer than an hour. But I just couldn't find a good stopping point in that last lesson. And that last lesson was indeed a very, very important lesson. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to show you how to build on what we did last week and how you can actually go in and control the speed of the <clears throat> smart car. So I will need you to get out a fresh new, a fresh new Arduino IDE. I think I can do that a fresh new Arduino IDE. And then what we want to do is we want to go ahead and start where we left off last week. And you probably saved your program, but it is a good idea if we make sure we're starting at the same point. So go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. Use the little green search icon to search on robotic training lesson five. And then you should come to this most exceptional web page. And you can see I have the code from last week so all you have to do is come over here and click on the uh, little two icons and then right mouse click to copy and then you should be able to come over to the Arduino IDE and then let's paste in here like such and after doing a cut and paste, I always like to just try it out to make sure that I got the code correctly before I change anything. And also for me, it kind of lets me see, did I really get it on that web page correctly? So we're going to plug this bad boy in. And then I always like to turn him off. Is it a him or a her? I am not sure. Let's turn him off. Okay. I don't know. Cars, I'm not sure what you call them. All right. The gender nature of a car. Okay, so we have it turned off, and now we're going to download the code. Looks like it's happy. I'm going to turn it on, and it's. I'll hit reset. Okay, it's going forward for the 10 feet like we told it to, and then it changes direction, and then it comes back to us for 10 feet, and then re it reorients itself. And so that's what we're, we had left it last week. Remember where it would go forward 10 feet, do a pivot 180 degrees, then go forward, which would be back to us, and then pivot so it kind of ends up how it started. So it looks like the code is working. But the little secret that I did not tell you last week was that you can actually set the speed of this thing. And so what we did was up in the void setup, we just enabled channel A and enabled channel B. Remember, A, uh, E and A is connected to pin 5, and E and B is connected to pin 6. And we set those as output pins, and then we digital write them high. When we digital write those enable A and enable B pins high, that's just basically saying go full speed. 
that way you can develop everything without worrying about the speed and if you don't set a speed it will go full speed but what you can do is if instead of doing an analog write if instead of doing a digital write you will do an analog write what is going to happen then is is that it will go a varying speed now i'm going to leave this up here in the void setup where I digital write them high and that way if we don't set a speed they'll always have a speed they'll always go full speed but then down here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function and that function is going to be called set speed and we will do that after the void loop and so you can see that this closes that while loop this closes the void loop and then our new first function is going to be void set speed. Well, if we're going to set the speed, we've got to send it a speed. And so you got to think you could run the two wheels, the, the left wheels and the right wheels, you could run them at different speeds. We're not going to do that today, but let's just put that in. So later, if we want to play around with that, we could. So I'm going to say, I'm going to send it a left vowel, and then I'm going to send it a right val and remember if we pass these parameters we got to tell it inside of these parentheses what it is so that will be an int and left val will be an int and then we need to close that parentheses and we need to open a squiggly and then it does close the squiggly for us you see we got the close squiggly there so now what would we want to do well we would want to ana Oh, that, that was not good. What did I hit? I have no idea what crazy key I hit that made it do that. Okay, but we're back up where we need to be. So instead of doing a digital write, I'm going to do an analog write. Right? Okay. Now, if I just put in 255, comma, two, if, if I put in 255, that would be exactly the same thing as a digital write high because analog write 255 is the same as a digital write high. But I'm not going to do that. I am still going to write to ENA because that's where I'm sending the signal. That's the pin I'm sending it to. And then I'm going to put in left vowel. And so when I call this, I need to send a number and that number needs to be between 0 and 255. And so this is going to set the speed of the left wheels. And then I will need to also set the speed of the right wheel. So I will do an analog right. Turns the happy little orange. And then ENB will be the right set of wheels. And I will send that right vowel like that. OK, so now. What will happen is, and let me get rid of all this. Let me just go forward 10 so we don't have all this other stuff. Okay. But now before we go forward 10, let's set the speed. So I'm going to say set speed. Well, we can go between 0 and 255. And so I'm just going to say left is equal to 10. I'm going to say right is equal to 10. Now why did I use a different variable here? Because this is what I pass it, okay? And the name of what you pass it does not have to be the same name as what you catch. Down here below it's going to know that number as left vowel. But up here it's going to know it as left. And I'm just showing you that name doesn't have to be the same. It's the position and you're passing the number that's contained by the name and you're passing it from the variable left over to the variable left vowel. I hope that makes sense. I've got a great couple of uh, tutorials on functions. If you guys want to go back and review those, just Paul McCorder Arduino functions, and you'll find the two or three. It'll really, uh, really some good videos there if you need a little more help here. Okay, so we're going to set speed, and what are we going to send it? We're going to send it left and right, okay, and then it'll go the forward 10. So this should. This should download it, so I'm going to make sure that we are off. And then I'm going to download it. I can't imagine I made a mistake in that few lines of code, but denied I made a mistake. What on earth did I do wrong there? How could I have made a mistake? Oh, okay, I set left and right as 10, but I didn't declare them. So I need to come up here above the void setup, and I need to just say I'm going to have an integer left 
and an integer right. I have been working so hard on those our, those uh, tutorial series on the Jetson Nano and on the Jetson Xavier, those artificial intelligent ones, and all that's written in Python, and Python doesn't make you declare your variables, and so I'm getting a little sloppy after spending six months or so doing a lot of Python coding, which you don't declare your variables. All right, so let's right mouse click. I think it's going to work this time. Okay, now I'm going to turn it on and reset it. And what you can see is the tires are not turning. Can you hear that hum? Well, the reason it's humming is it's kind of like, remember when we did the Arduino DC motor control in the Arduino uh, tutorial series? You cannot run a DC motor arbitrarily slow. And when we tried to run this with a value of 10, that is too slow and it just won't move. And so let's go ahead and let's bring this on up to 50. We got to find at what value these things run and start reliably. So let's try 50. Okay. And now they're really humming. I think you could probably hear them humming. Uh, let me try this again. I'll hit reset. But they're not spinning. But you can see that almost like if I help them a little bit, they'll start spinning. But helping them start spinning, would that be running reliably? No. They need to run reliably. They need to start reliably without your help. So let's take these suckers on up to 75. And let's try that. Okay. Again, they'll, they'll run if I help them start, but they're still not starting on their own. And I'm going to try 100, 100, and now I'm going to start them. Okay, boom. Did you see that they both started without help? I think 100 is a good number. Now we could play around with the difference between 75 and 100 and see exactly where they work. Like let's try 90 and 90 and just see what happens there. See if they'll start themselves at 90. Okay, one set started and the others kind of started, but started a little late. So I'm going to say at 100, they seem to be fairly reliable. Okay, so I'm going to go 100 and 100. All right, and now, so I say the left speed is 100, the right speed is 100. Well, really, it's the values that you're sending to set speed, and that is going to be kind of the slowest that they will run. Uh, reliably and then a hundred is the fastest that they will run reliably and then I'm going to tell it to move forward with the 10 feet okay and so I think I have that in there already so I am going to just to make sure just to make sure kind of obsessive compulsive isn't it? it's kind of sad but notice that I only downloaded it one extra time not 10 extra times so it's not like a debilitating amount of OCD, but I just don't want to walk over there and have it not do what I want it to. All right, so I'm going to unplug that. We're going to go to the most excellent RoboCam, and I have a microphone on RoboCam so you can hear me a little bit better when I'm over there. So let's see if this is going to work. All right, so we told it we wanted it to go 10 feet. We will come over to our robot proving ground. We will set it exactly on the start line. We have told it to go 10 feet. We will hit the reset button to make it go. And it is off. One, two, three, four. And it went four feet, six inches. It did not go 10 feet. Let's try it again. There it goes, one, two, three, four. It went four feet, six inches. One, two, three, four. Four feet, six inches. It did not go 10 feet. So it did not go 10 feet. And let's think why it did not go 10 feet.
So let's come back over here. There we go. And let's go back and look at our forward function again. Remember, our forward function was assuming that you were going at 2.45 feet per second. And then based on that, it calculates a delay time. That is, I have lost my cursor. That is, uh, it calculates a delay time assuming that you are going at 2.45 meters or 2.45 feet per second. When we put that speed thing in, that speed set in, we broke this function because this equation is no longer right. And the reason this equation is lo no longer right is because you are not going at 2.45 feet per second. Okay, so this is your homework for next week. I want you to make this thing I want you to make this where you still have your functions forward, backwards, you know, left and uh, forward, backward, turn left, turn right. And I want you to fix the functions forward and backward where no matter what speed or what right value here you set it at, that it will go the right distance. Okay, I'm going to give you a hint. You can do this by trial and error, in which case you will become very frustrated and you will probably throw this thing out, or you can think like an engineer. Now, how would an engineer think? An engineer would think about using math. An engineer would think about what's the smallest number of measurements that you could do to kind of get a calibration and then set it up where whatever value you put in, the thing is going to work. Okay. Does that make sense? And so I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Now, uh, if you're like a young person in junior high and you haven't had algebra yet and things like that, you're probably not going to be able to figure it out. But don't worry, I'll show you how to do it next week and you can kind of follow along. And then even if you don't completely understand the math, you can just use my equations and you'll be okay. Don't get discouraged. Now, I know some of you very talented high school students out there you should be able to figure this out. We have some very, very bright high school students that are following these lessons. I think you know who you are, and you should be able to figure this out. But give it your best shot. Don't get discouraged if you don't get it. Uh, I'll show you how to do it next week, but really try to do it. Really try to do it. Okay, I want you to start understanding math is your friend. And some of you old geezers out there, you've gone through your life, you've gone through your whole life without ever really understanding the math. You need to, you need to work with me to get this figured out because maybe when you went to high school, it made no sense, all these X's and Y's and lines and slopes and all that. Where would I ever use this? Well, this is the perfect example. You really are not going to be able to get this thing done unless you do the math. And so the math is your friend. The math will allow you to do this. And even if you've been so far out of math that you're not able to do it, at least next week, make sure you go through it with me so that in the future you will be able to understand how to solve problems like this. Because, man, this is really what engineering is about. It's about using math to make something that matters work in a way that you could never make it work if you didn't do the math. Okay, this has been a little bit of a shorter lesson. I'm sorry last week's lesson was so long, but what I'll do is I'll come back next week and I'll show you how to do the homework. So what you got to do is you've got to adjust this forward uh, this f void forward function and the void backward function so that whatever speed you set it at, the thing will go the right distance. All right, that should be fun. I'm having a lot of fun with this little project. I hope you're enjoying it too. If you guys like this, be sure to give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure that you subscribe. And when you do, make sure you ring that bell. Click that bell, and that way you will get notifications when my new material comes out. And share this with other people, man. This is some great content. See if you can find someone else to hook up with these lessons. Let's see if we can start developing a little bit larger community around these great engineering projects projects. So this is Paul McWhorter from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.